So I'll be doing has been hotel and I want to go through the character of Charlie. What makes her tick? Why does she care so much about the people in hell and wanting to save them? And is that an issue or a good thing? Possibly. Could Charlie be codependent? Let's find out. Did you hear from your mom yet? Oof. How long has it been now? Only seven years. But this kingdom was something she really cared about. Something I care about. At least you aren't alone. I just hope what I'm trying to do here will work. It will. The thing with codependency, people that are codependent care a lot about other people. They feel that it is up to them to help others if they're in distress, even if they haven't asked for it. And one of the first questions you can ask yourself to say, am I codependent or not, is if someone asks you a question like, will you please take care of my plants, in your head you say, hell no, and out of your mouth you'll say, of course I can, and I'll take care of your cats as well. Yes! <laughs> ah! Ah, what? <sighs> <sighs> What's going Do you hear her bouncing? Like that's the thing is a lot of people that are caretakers are codependent, but she also is like a super feeler. So super feelers wear all of their emotions on their sleeve. And often when they are excited, they get really excited and their kind of exuberance overflows around everyone else, which sometimes may be annoying or too much for those around you. But it's almost like you're that cup that just flows over with whatever emotion you're feeling at the time. And Charlie definitely does that. The bouncing was just too cute. My dad just called. He said that the leader of the angel army wants to meet. He asked if I could go instead. <laughs> She's like almost hyperventilating. She's so excited with this opportunity. You can hear that. And that's when you'd want to do your breathing. <sighs> Take a moment to be able to calm yourself down because there's that happy zone when you are useful and helpful. Then you get overexcited. Your brain just bzz, it's just gone. You can become a little bit too fried and not be able to process everything that's around you and say too much or too little or hurt the people around you because you're not really paying attention to them. But the extermination just happened. <sighs> what could they want this soon? After I can do this. Somehow I know it. I wish I could play the songs because the songs are so catchy. Once you've heard them, you can't get them out of your head, but it will totally get this entire video like sanctioned. <laughs> I won't be able to play any of it, but you can sing it along in your head with me. Codependent people are often really on the positive end of the spectrum. They have this great belief in themselves, but it often drives them because they're usually so responsible and thinking about others that they believe in themselves sometimes more than they should or they end up biting off more than they can chew because they don't want to disappoint people or feel guilty if someone asks them to be able to make someone else feel bad. And so codependency can be a double-edged sword. In certain fields, they usually go into the helping field. Doctors, therapists, teachers, caretakers, people that will care for other people because that's what gives them that dopamine, that feeling of that high and being inspired. They feed off of being able to help other people, even if they didn't ask them to, though. How about we get to know each other a little? Mm, how about some lunch? You hungry? I got you. Here's my personal favorite. You'll love it. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I got you again! <laughs> Not funny, it's just not funny. Sorry, Adam, there has to be one just on Adam because the narcissistic traits that Adam shows and his lack of kind of situational awareness when you're like on the top of everything and everyone's like idolizing you, something happens to your personality. Mm, yeah. I thought you wanted equality. No, our shared problem of overpopulation in hell. <laughs> That's not a problem. Not awesome. Those are my people. You know that, right? And that's that part of caring for other people, taking on other projects to be able to make things better. And that takes a lot of belief in who you are. Charlie believes in her mission. And she also believes in herself to be able to get through to people. Now, the problem is, is that often when you're this super positive, super feeler that has these caretaking traits, the thing is you often believe that everyone else is like you and we're not. And so she meets someone like Adam that has all of these narcissistic traits and she thinks that because of logic, because of truth, because of empathy, that she can get through to him. 
But the problem is, is that Adam doesn't have those feelings. He doesn't see the people from hell as people anymore. And when we dehumanize a section of the population, that allows us to do horrible things to them. And that's the piece that Charlie doesn't get. And they earned damnation. You're wrong. Everyone makes mistakes. Angels don't make mistakes. You really think that? I know that. Yeah, I've never made a mistake in my life. The only reason you're still here is because Daddy gave you and your hellborn kind a pardon from an exorcist blade. How does that feel? That one got to her, though. Like, that feeling, because for caretakers, often people that are caretakers are codependent. One of the defining factors is they're often finding people or things that are broken or need help, because that makes them feel most useful. And often that's because they want to be recognized, or that's the role that they had. They were the parentified child, the person that had to take care of their parents or other siblings in their family unit. That's what gives them purpose because they want to believe that they matter and they often need that from an outside source. What we need is to know that you matter no matter what because of who you are. And so that piece kind of hurt Charlie very deeply. Oops, almost out of time. Guess we should get into it. Oh! Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I've got a lot to get through and not a lot of time and I feel like you weren't hearing me before, so here goes. <clears throat> I know how's population. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do that much. It's just so cute. I just love that she drew all of these adorable pictures. I'll put them in because they're just so cute. And you can tell that they were done with crayons and she spent all of this time doing this so that she could present it because, and that's really beneficial. It's a really smart idea from Charlie because sometimes people are visual learners like me and they need to see something to make it matter, to make it real to them. It sticks much more inside of our brain. It fires more parts of our brain to have a visual that goes with your words. So it's a much more effective presentation style. And you'll remember it for longer too. And then it's got the catchy tune. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's like a jingle or a commercial. It's why they're so effective. Why, hello, my dear. <gasps> wait, wait, wait. I come in peace. Peace. <laughs> I have to do it on Serventious because he's just so cute. I heard that you're helping people. People who want to be better. <gasps> you heard right. Welcome to our home of healing, our resort of restoration. I love her exuberance, like it just overflows out of her. This chump was trying to kill us like literally six hours ago. Angel has a point. And now you want to bring him in here to live with us? This place is about second chances, and who deserves one more than this? Aren't you supposed to protect this place? <sighs> and then she does the puppy dog eyes, so that... That she can keep him like like a pet or like a kitten that you've just found that you want to bring home. Guess he's not much of a threat without the war machine. Or even with the war machine. Oh, oh thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So caretakers can sometimes though get exhausted because they're pouring everything about themselves into everyone else around them in hopes that that can inspire other people to change. But you have to remember, you cannot carry people over the finish line. And a great way to look at it, if you are codependent, you know someone that's a caretaker or codependent, it's that you shouldn't be working harder than anyone else is. The secret hope often also of the caretaker is that others will care for them as well, but often they end up feeling upset because that doesn't always happen because usually they're not attached to other people that are as much of a caretaker as they are. This is the bar and the bartender. This is the curtain and this is the new wall after you broke the last one. <laughs> and oh, oh, this, this is... Babe, you don't have to show them every detail. Sorry, I'm just so excited to have our first real guest. <laughs> and that's the thing is that exuberance, when you're always kind of burning at 110%, you can sometimes end up feeling really burnt out. And people that are caretakers, because you'll sneeze and they'll have the tissue already ready at hand, they're the first people to be able to get up or see a problem and solve it without anyone even asking. But doing that all the time, you can often end up with burnout, especially in work situations. And when you're always doing so much, eventually people start to just expect it. It isn't you being a superhero, it's just you being normal. So you want to be able to monitor your energy levels and are you doing too much? And sometimes it's okay to say that dreaded word, no. 
because often you feel that other people's expectations are your obligations, and they're not. You've met our newest guest, Sir Pentius. <laughs> ah, yes. You're the one who ruined my coat. Oh, I guess this is a great time for your first lesson. Um, how to apologize. The first step to becoming a better person is to admit when you are wrong. She's so right, though. It's a lost art, a lost skill. And to be able to actually practice that skill and being okay with saying sorry, and sorry doesn't always mean that you were even at fault. Sometimes you can be sorry that someone else's feelings were hurt or that they misinterpreted something. I think that it's hard for people to take responsibility. They often become defensive and that makes things worse. I think this is a wonderful lesson. So we are going to play a little game. Everyone, follow me. My name is Charlie. I like to sing. And when we get to know each other, it's the greatest thing. It is a good technique for her to be able to like, you know, do things with song. But like, again, because she's such a feeler, she believes that everyone else has the same skills and comfort levels that she does. And because she doesn't have a lot of social anxiety and she really believes in herself, she figures everyone else will be comfortable, but not everyone else is comfortable to rhyme things and to be able to clap and to do things that might seem more childish. Some other people that are more fear of judgment might feel really uncomfortable doing something childish because they, or that they see as childish um, because they would believe that that would have them judged by others. My name's Sapenjis. I like to build. Sorry, he's so cute. I had to put it in. I can't even stop because he's just so adorable. And he did a really good job with it, but that'll be on his own video. So I don't even know if we'll be putting this in. Can't believe we thought you could handle even something this simple. You miserable failure. I, I just make it quick, I guess. Not that I deserve it. Pinches. It starts with sorry. I love it. Um, that idealism, that want to be able to give. And I think that the, the wonderful thing about Charlie is when no one else would be able to see the mistakes that they've made. She's a perfect archetype, that perfect person to be able to show that that's what really redemption is. Don't we all deserve that? Who hasn't been in his shoes? All of us are capable of doing abhorrent, horrible things. And if we're really honest, that should we really be throwing the first stone? Or shouldn't we be giving people the opportunity to be able to turn another leaf? Wouldn't we want it if we were the person that made the mistake or were in their shoes? Sometimes we're hypocrites and we want to believe that we're better than that and we would never do that. And so we can often like throw people to damnation so very quickly and effortlessly and never think twice about it. And so I think that Charlie offers us that feeling of hope and that we can be better people too, even to those that everyone else would look the other way. Ah, <sighs> good first day. Let's get some rest. In order to save yourself from your own personal hell, you need to get all the knowledge you need with today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Learn a new skill, get prepared for whatever life or death has to throw at you. Learn, enjoy with Brilliant's ever-growing new set of courses. Brilliant makes college level courses available to help you be smart as a whip. Each course is designed for high velocity learning, which means it will help you stay focused and reach your goals really fast. And Brilliant makes learning uh, like a game, fun, with cool features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others. And that helps it never get boring, because when it's boring, we don't learn very well. We all know that we want our knowledge to stick so we don't have to do it over and over. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced math, AI, data science, neural networks, and many more, with new lessons added monthly. So far, I've covered their courses on algebra, logic, geometry, and I've found all of them really engaging and quite easy to get through, which is difficult to make a course. Course on Logic had challenging problem solving exercises where I got to construct the critical thinking skills that are the basics for mathematical reasoning. It was enjoyable, interactive, and having it be a visual interactive way to learn is my favorite manner to learn because I'm really that visual kind of learner. There's also no pressure because you can break down each of the lessons into smaller and smaller pieces as you need. They also have courses on how technology works, we all need to know that, and thinking in code. 
If you're still not sure, why don't you just try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. Just head on over to brilliant.org slash georgiadow or click on the link in the description. The first 200 people will get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click on that button on the screen and head on over to brilliant.org slash georgiadow. Clicking on that button really does help out my channel. So thank you and thank you to Brilliant. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. I loved it. I love it. I think that Charlie just has such amazing, beautiful traits, but know that if you're codependent and you want to fix and solve everything, sometimes it also is everyone else's responsibility to learn from their own mistakes and can't drag everyone else over the finish line. Sometimes you just have to show them a path and let them lead the way. I love also that Husband Hotel has great, these great therapeutic values that the entire show is kind of cycled around, helping you be a better person. So let me know who are your favorite people from Hasbin Hotel, what are the scenes or people that you would like me to follow up on or cover in the comments as well.